Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McCalla and today I have a review of the DDPi Dual Channel Dash Cam. This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Century Batteries. Now I've been a big fan of DDPi Dash Cams for geez, around 5 years. I actually run them in every single car that I have. From the Mini, the Mini 2 and the Mini 3, I've bought them all at full price. I've used them for years, I love them. I think they are fantastic dash cams. Now on the face of it, this seems like a pretty compelling option because it's got a 1600p forward facing camera and then a 1080p rear facing camera. And even better, it retails for just 149 Australian dollars currently. So let's have a look inside this box and see what's included. So let's have a look in the box. Straight away we've got a rear camera box and a front camera box. So this is a DDPi Mola N3 Pro. And straight up it looks pretty good. We've got our speaker and microphone outlets on the top and bottom. And we've got this connector here which mounts the dash cam to its windscreen mount. We've also got a USB cable and on the other side we've got our cigarette lighter adapter and our windscreen mount itself. And we can see it clips on very nicely to the dash cam and it's a very neat solution. So we'll put these back in the box and we'll have a look at the rear camera. So the rear camera is a pretty simple beast. It's a simple rear cam with a really long USB cable and an extra sticky tab in the box as well. So with all dash cams, I recommend getting a hard wire mounting kit. This is an added extra cost, but it allows you to neatly wire in the dash cam to your car permanently without using the cigarette lighter adapter and just minimizing the amount of cables that are floating around on your dashboard. I'll leave a link to the camera and to the hard wire mounting kit in the video description below. So first impressions, love it. I really love in particular that the camera can detach from the mounting pad. And the thing about a memory card versus inbuilt memory, that's a bit of a contentious issue because all of the previous DDPi cameras I've used have got inbuilt memory. This one runs an external memory card, an SD card, and that's not included. But when it comes to the pros and cons of that, there are a few which we'll talk about later. But for now, let's talk installation. As you can see here, this camera installed very neatly. You can see the mounting bracket just behind my rear vision mirror here. And we've got our connection powering the camera and also our rear camera connection as well. Moving around the front, you can see it's really awesome to be able to hide the camera behind the rear vision mirror. It just minimizes the obstruction to your driving. And it does mean we can route the wiring above the windscreen behind the A-pillar trim. And then it can duck down through the dashboard here to the fuse panel. And this is where the hard wiring kit comes into play. Simply put your permanent 12 volt and accessory 12 volt connections into relevant fuses. Look up your switch panel diagram and use a voltmeter to work out which ones you need. And then the wiring for the rear camera can simply run behind the roof lining here above the front and rear doors, all the way down to the rear tailgate. So here we can see the camera mounted on the rear glass and unfortunately my rear window tint is absolutely shocking. It is bubbled to the max, meaning that the clarity through this rear cam is going to be compromised. Do keep this in mind a little bit later when we're looking at the footage. So straight up here, let's have a look at the front mounted camera on a beautiful sunny day here in Noosa, Queensland. The footage does look quite saturated, but I think it comes into play when you look at the plates. We can easily spot the number plates on these vehicles parked on the side of the road. And overall, it is beautifully clear. I think it's doing an excellent job. And we can also easily see this car's plate sitting in front of us, probably about five or 10 meters away. On an overcast day, it also does a pretty good job. And you can have a look here at the 1600p footage versus 1080p. This is zoomed in all the way to 1080, so you can get a good indication of what the overall camera's quality is. Now the rear camera, as I mentioned, is going to be compromised because of my bubbly window tint. But even so, we can easily see the number plate on this tailgating Ford Escape as we give him a warning and tell him to back off. Now dash cams come into their own at catching all of those crazy things that you see happening on the road. And the camera even works well at dusk. This is a really low light situation, but even so it looks nice and bright and you can easily spot the number plates on the three nearest cars sitting here in front of us. This scene was actually a lot darker than it looks here on screen, but even so, have a look, you can spot the plates easily. You can almost read the plates on that white Commodore sitting at the front there too. And then when it goes full on night time, it also performs pretty good too. So we have some street lighting here obviously, but you can easily spot the number plate on that Toyota there on the side. And really the only time you won't be able to read plates will be if your headlights are actually reflecting off the plate and sort of blinding the camera. 
Now this street here was a lot darker, but the camera has done a great job at really capturing every little skerrick of light it can. And you can even just make out the number plate on that car, which we're driving past there at the moment. So overall, I think it's done a really great job. Now I know what you guys are thinking. That rear footage was not very clear. Well, let me show you something. We'll open up the glass. So have a look at that. That's how clear the footage actually is. It is 1080p, nice and crisp. You should be very happy for a rear mounted cam. You probably aim it down a little bit so you can see cars that are right behind you. So yes, my tint is absolutely shocking. We definitely need to get that replaced. That's actually a great time to segue to the DD Pi app. So you can see here, I've got all four of my cameras loaded into the app already. And the one we're looking at here is the N3 Pro A62A. So if we load into the app, we can see the live shot through the dashboard, through the front. Uh, if we click on the little icon here at the top right of the video, you can swap to the back. It's gotten worse because the tint is peeling. <laughs> it's looking terrible. But yes, as you saw just before, very clear out the back. It should be anyway. So we'll swap back to the front. Uh, you've got readouts here, you've got a G-meter readout, you've got your north-south, east-west orientation. You've got your speed as well, of course, which is important for evidence. If you have something happening, you need to prove something. And also the app lets you capture video and photos directly from the app, save them onto your phone, do whatever you want with them. So my other three DD Pi cameras all have inbuilt storage, and that means I am limited purely to this app to download footage and whatnot. And usually that's okay, because if you're getting footage off your dash cam, it's probably a maximum of 30 seconds worth of footage that you'd be after if you're just proving what happened, if it was an accident or just something stupid that you saw on the road, it'd be a short clip. So if you're after a clip which is only that long, it'll take you about a minute maximum to get in the app, find the spot, download the clip and you're done. But the disadvantage is that if you're after longer footage than that, it's going to take forever. And that is where the benefit of this camera really shines for me and that is you can simply detach the camera from the mounting pad take it inside and then take out the SD card, put it in a card reader on your PC, download all the files at up to, you know, 80 to 100 megabytes per second. So we can cycle back through the app here and see where we just were. That was about 15 minutes ago, I was sitting at a red light. Um, but yeah, you can go through, cycle back as many days or as far as you can, and that'll depend on the SD card size. We can also hit this little button at the top right of the screen to go into the settings where we have volume, which I don't want my camera to make any sound at all, so I mute it. Uh, you've got a guide for the installing the cam that'll give you the horizon and the front line to help you line it up. I've got them turned off now. Uh, you can rotate the rear lens up, down, left or right. You can set the video encoding, the resolution. So I've got it set to the full 2K 1600p. You can drop it down to 1080 if you want. The rear cam is always 1080, but yeah, this is for the front one. Uh, we have whether you want the microphone to record, which mine is. You can show the date, watermark, and the speed on the video. Uh, and when you capture photos, you can set it to capture 10 seconds or, you know, however long worth of videos or not you want to recover or record at that time. You can also select the collision sensitivity. Uh, you can also detect what happens when the engine is stopped when you park. Does it record a time-lapse video? Is it doing normal recording uh, or is it dormant? Uh, you can set the name, password, you can manage the storage. So I've only got 32 gigs worth of storage, about 29.7 gigs reported. So yeah, I think the app is awesome. I've been using this app for years now on all my other cameras. It's the same app, no matter what DD Pi camera you buy, it links in through here. It's awesome if you've got multiple cams like me, they're all through here, the app's quick. The Wi-Fi is pretty quick as well. It downloads clips in, in almost real time speed. So if you're after a 30 second clip, it'll take about 30 seconds to download which is pretty good. So overall, I have to say, this camera to me is a bargain. I've paid hundreds of dollars for my other cameras. Some of them were 200 and something, $300 back in the day, uh, to buy this dual camera setup for 149. And at the moment as well, they've got a $30 off on the Amazon link if you hit that in the description below. $119 is what it will cost you. For a camera of this quality and the reliability that I've come to expect from DD Pi, I think it's a, an amazing deal. Um, a lot of cameras, cheaper ones, can suffer from issues to do with overheating, especially in Australia in the summer. I've been running this camera for about two weeks and it's been through a heat wave here in Queensland. It is not put a foot wrong, to be honest. Uh, it has recorded flawlessly, uh, not a problem. 
So really, if you take away anything from this video, even though this is a really cheap camera setup, DD Pi know how to make dash cams. They do a really good job of it. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I think it is a really good dash cam for the money. I would quite happily run this setup in every single one of my cars. I think it, it matches the quality of the DD Pi Mini 3, which I run in one of my other vehicles for the front cam. Uh, but this is a dual cam setup for 119 bucks if you use that voucher. You can't go wrong. But yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.